did you make of Dan there and the way that you guys were kind of able to get Porzingis involved? Well, I mean, it's um, it's a good thing to bounce back after a tough night last night. Uh, you know, quality opponent. I know they played as well, but anytime you have to go up against a guy like LeBron, it's <laughs> yeah, you're you're in for a night because he he can go off at any point, and he, he had a stretch there, um, which is you know pretty pretty amazing. Um, he's the way he's playing right now is it's unbelievable. Um, the number he's put up, his production. Uh, so we knew we were going to be up against it, and we knew we had a challenge. So to be able to k keep pace. Weathered the storm um, after they hit big shot after big shot. Uh, showed a little bit of uh, resilience, a little bit of grit to stay with it, not get frustrated. Um, then we started to make plays. You know, obviously KP late. Uh, you know, Sato had a good stretch ish. Denny. Um, so it would go down the line. Everyone who uh, went out there uh, gave us something. And I think that's just how it has to be. Uh, and so with Porzingis, like, are you guys using him the way that you envision? Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, you know, I think you have to pick your spots. You don't want to play that way the whole night, but just reading how they were guarding it, uh, they were switching and, you know, putting a smaller guy on him, get him to a spot where he's comfortable. He doesn't have to really put it down, just raise up and shoot. Um, and then late, they wanted to stay in coverage, so we put him back in, you know, normal pick and roll action, and he hits a big three. So um, that's part of it. You know, I think it's also him getting a little bit more comfortable with the other four guys out there them kind of reading and feeling, you know, where he wants the ball. Um, so, you know, you can play out, you can play off of him, you know, and I think it's the more comfort he gets, the, the better we'll be. What can you say about the lift he got from the bench? Well, it's big. I mean, it, that, that's a big lift for us. And, you know, our bench has shown that time and time again this season. Um, to get that, you know, consistently is where we want to be. But we needed all of it tonight, which was, uh, it's a good sign. You know, it's the best part about it, honestly, that, you know, our offense was, was clicking. The fact that our fourth quarter defense, we held them 20 points, 42 from the field. Um, and overall, we were the aggressor. We got to the line 30 plus times, um, but it didn't detract from how we wanted to play. We went to KP late, but you know we had 30 assists. So the ball kept moving you know, throughout the game. That's important. I think that that's when we are uh, extremely efficient. And what's the update on Kuzma and his knee? Uh, yeah, he um, he had a little bit of knee tendonitis um, as he tried to warm up this afternoon, um, and it, it just bothered him a, a bit too much. So, just you know, wanted to let it calm down a bit, and he should be good to go uh, when we travel to Houston. Wes, I know you're most concerned about this season, but if you were to extrapolate for next season off of some of the things you saw tonight, how how encouraging? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's encouraging, but, you know, I, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. The fact that it was one game um, and we were desperately in need of a game like this. So all that, that's great. <laughs> but um, t t we have to do that consistently. I think that's, that's what we're looking for, a level of consistency, not only on the offensive end, but uh, defensively. Um, can we sustain play for as close to 48 minutes as possible? How welcome was the aggressiveness that you saw from Denny throughout the entire game? No, it's, uh, I think that's who he has to be. Um, and it's not hunting shots. It's not you know playing reckless, but playing with a little bit of force. Um, defensively, you, you know you're going to have your hands full. But uh, when you get opportunities, play downhill, protect the ball, try to finish in the paint. Um, and then you know turn around and made a big three late in the game. He, he, sh he stepped up with poise and knocked it down. So all those things are you know incremental steps for him. Um, but to see where he was early in the year, and you know, obviously I wasn't here last season, but from what I'm hearing, what I've watched, where he was last year and now, is he's a different player. Coach uh, Chris Stapps comes in and does does damage tonight. Of course, playing in the Western Conference as a member of the Mavericks, he knows LeBron well. Also as a Nick, knowing LeBron in the Western Conference. I guess my question is, <laughs> what was Chris Stapps like in the huddle during this game? He, he was, oh. yeah, he was, he was his normal self. He, he doesn't, uh, you know, he, he gives input, which I think is great. Uh, he has a feel for the game and understanding. Um, he, he'll vocalize his thoughts about, you know, what he sees. Um, but he's not over animated. He's not, you know, doesn't get too high, too low. He, has, uh, he plays with poise. And I, I like that about him. You know, I'm sorry, go ahead. When I look at Chris Naps, I feel like he's so tall. He's still developing. <laughs> um, and, I, and I guess when I look at him, I see him as such a, a dual forward. You could give him 
an attribution as far as position and what he means for your team? What do you call him? A Swiss Army knife. Yeah, well, you know what? He's a, you could argue he's, you know, he's a five, he's a four, he's a basketball player. And he's very skillful. You know, his, his size oftentimes, you know, guys get pegged because of their height um, or their, a lot of guards, sometimes their stature. But, you know, what does his game bring to the floor? Um, his ability to space the defense. Um, we've seen him play off the bounce, play in the post. Uh, I think he's a better passer than he's, he's given credit for. Um, and overall, he's done a decent job, you know, throughout his career of protecting the paint. So you, you could say he's a five, but, you know, the way he moves and the way he's able to space the floor, you, you know, offensively, he leads more to a, toward a four. So I, I don't want to label him, but uh, right now he's, he's, he's our starting five, <laughs> and he's a hell of a basketball player. Well, I mean, his career is historic, and I, I can't come close when it comes to guys I've coached. Uh, obviously, I've coached you know, Jokic, who's an MVP. Uh, I had one year with Clay and, and, and Steph out in Golden State. You know, obviously, the, that, that goes without saying. But you know, to look at his career over the years, and, you know, the sustainability that he's had um, to play at such a high level for so long, uh, the durability, uh, it's, it's, it's really impressive. And I'm not sure it's, it gets enough credit. You know, for, for all the things that he's done, not, not only for the teams he's played for, um, but, but for the game itself. So, I mean, it's a, it's a heck of an accomplishment, and, you know, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. What did you mean of the way that you got, guys have been able to kind of pass toward point guard with Brad out and specifically Matt with Ish? And, um, yeah, just kind of well, well, you have to kind of platoon them. I mean, uh, it, it's tough at times because you know, to, to play three guys at any position is tough. The minutes get choppy, or a guy sits too long. Um, Sato kind of toggles between, you know, point guard and, t and two guard, um, and we just kind of go down the line. What do we need in that moment? You know, what fits? You know, uh, and we've talked about how Wu has, has done the best job overall, keeping us organized. Where Ish's pace and his ability to attack, you know, collapse the defense and make plays is has been good for us. Sato does a little bit of those two things, but his size allows us to, to play and switch, especially late game. So trying to find that combination, um, you know, two of the three nightly is not always easy, but, you know, th those guys have been good, you know, good teammates about it. And, and they understand, hey, we're just trying to do the best we can in the moment. So whoever gives us what we need is who's going to play. And then with Denny's playmaking in there as well, so how does that kind of factor in? Well, that, that, that factors in because, you know, Sato's going to eat in the Corey and Denny's minutes. And you don't necessarily want to do that, but uh, we need to go with the guys who are, who are playing well. I thought he was terrific. And, you know, to his credit, he didn't know until, I think, two minutes before the meeting, you know, when that's like 36 on the clock. So, uh, we, we, you know, they were trying to get, you know, Kuz warm and, and get him moving, and it just didn't work. So um, we let him know, and he was fine. Um, and I, I didn't see any ill effect or any change in his demeanor at all. No, I just told him, hey, just so you know, you're, you're going to start. <laughs> and he, he dealt with it just fine. Hey, Stiles? Hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. In the current time, we saw three European guys, uh, Daniel Diak, Christoph Sporzinis, and Thomas Zalorowski, take the, took the ball in their hands, make plays. How, how important is it to have those type of uh, players and how admire you personally, how admire the European basketball? Well, you know, it, it, you have guys who know how to play. You know, there's a trust factor. Now, you know, it's make or miss, and you can figure you, you, it won't always go your way. But they're going to try to make the right play um, at the right time. And I think that's just uh, the, the way the, the game is played over there. It's, it's game first and, 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 you know, individual accolades second. Um, and, you know, that team basketball is, is probably one of the biggest attributes. Um, so it's it carries over. Those guys have been terrific. Um, and it, we take a lot from it. I know I do, uh, watching EuroLeague stuff and uh, picking up some you know after timeout plays and, and things. Uh, very creative, very fluid, um, very po positionalist at times. And I think we've seen over the years how the NBA has kind of adopted more of that style. So I got to ask a question. Uh, you've been a teammate with him in LA. And uh, to see him get number two on the all-time scoring list, uh, 
I'm just, you know, ecstatic, you know, uh, never shocked. You know, he's just, you know, playing with him for uh, about what I want to say four years um, and just seeing what he can do, you know, and how he do it. You know, it just, it never, you know, it never seems to amaze me. You know, he's been striving for greatness, you know, ever since, you know, he stepped foot in the league and just to be a part of some of that, you know, uh, and it's felt great, you know, and also just, you know, seeing him get it, uh, be, become second all time, you know, they're just even, even better, you know, you know, he's a, he's a brother, you know, first and foremost, you know, no matter what team I'm on, uh, and I'm always congratulating him on his you know, compliments. What was that? How long did it take for you guys to formulate your hands? Oh, yeah. Um, I say it, didn't it didn't take long. It, it took, I think, half of the season. No, to All Star break, then we got it down. Then we had to switch it because another teammate uh, kind of like do the same type of celebration. Uh, but you know, doing it every day, even practice. You know, just seeing them normally. You know. Speaking on on the court, you know, it's always we always doing it, so you know, I never like tend to forget it. What'd you uh, what'd you tell him, and what was that moment like at center court? Um, I mean, it was great, you know. Uh, I just told him, man, just keep going. You know, I basically with my words, but just keep going. You know, keep being great. You know, keep showing, you know, the world who you, like what's you know, who who LeBron James is, because uh, you know. A lot of kids are watching him. He got a lot of, uh, you know, fan base, you know, and, you know, just seeing that as a kid, you know, that could, you know, give kids hope, you know, and just uh, or, or dreams that they have of becoming, you know, or becoming LeBron or want to be better than LeBron, you know. Um, so I, I just told him just keep going. Um, I always want to say I would say the Kobe one, uh, because you know the the timing of it. You know we was in Philly, you know he passed him in Philly, you know and just everything else that happened after that. You know um, I think that was might be the the the, the, the one that I you know felt like great and amazed about. You know um, so yeah I think the Philly one was the, the best one. Uh, I mean, it means a lot. You know, we been trying to get a win. Uh, you know, any any by any means. So, uh, you know, it felt great just to get one. Uh, and at home, cause we've been on the road. You know, a lot. Um, but you know, I took my hats off to my teammates. You know, they they played well. You know, down the stretch in the second half. You know, we just played together. You know, we, we had each other back no matter what it was. What was the impetus for that KCP? I mean, you got a little something out of everybody from, you know, starters on down to the bench, and Sato was great. What pushed you guys to do that? Um, no, in the back of our mind, we don't we, we didn't want to lose. You know, we, we've lost uh, so many. You know, at one point you get tired of losing. So I think we, we came out in that second half. We took what Coach said, and... We, we applied it to the court, you know, being aggressive, you know, uh, we started moving the ball, knocking down shots, um, and er everybody was just having fun. That's that second half, I would say. I know your concern is the rest of this season, I get it. But to see, to win this game and to see Porzingis play the way he did late, how encouraging is that as you start to think about next year? Um, it's great. You know, <clears throat> KP7, what? One, seven, three. So I'm I'm missing two inches. So, you know, just down the stretch, you know, we we wanted to play through him. You know, no one could, you know, stop KP at at, at the elbow. You know, he was just turning around, shooting over everybody, and just it's gonna be great. You know, just to see if we can get him a full season. Um, uh, we already know what he can do. He can score the ball. You know, in, in any position. Uh, so, you know, we, I mean, I'm excited, you know, just to see him a full, full season. KCP, uh, you talk about uh, Porzingis, and of course, you play for the Lakers, you, you know what he brings to the table, and now he's your teammate. 
Um, he's still so tall, and I feel like he's still growing um, as a player. And person of hot size one. When you look at him, um, is there any teammate uh, that you've teamed up with that he reminds you of while you're on the court? Um, I mean, I never really thought about it. Um, I play with a bunch of guys. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't pinpoint one. Um, but I mean, I still feel like he he have his own game right now. You know, uh, if I would do, if I had to pinpoint someone, I would say he he, he imitate his game more off like uh, Dirk Nowinski. You know, seven footer. You know, all the turnaround jumpers. You know, shooting the tray ball. You know, being able to get on the block. You know, and go to work there too as well. Um, I think his game, his all around game that we need, um, and it's going to be great. You know, just to have him for a full season. Follow up. Um, you you talked about um, being at uh, the game in Philly. I was with you in the locker room. Yep. And I remember you wearing that shirt with the with the skull and car, you know, like the, the, the yeah. Kobe. Um, I guess my question to you is, knowing how much you respect the Kobe or respect Kobe in his game, and how much you know LeBron. Um, I think a lot of times people make those Michael and LeBron comparisons, and I'm not going to ask you to compare, but what I will ask is, in your lexicon of just greats, where do you settle the difference between Kobe and LeBron? Um, man, oh, man. I didn't get a chance to play with Kobe, you know, so I, I wouldn't know too much. I don't know how the, the comparison or the difference. Um, but just growing up watching Kobe and um, playing with LeBron, I feel like it's, there's really, you know, uh, for me, I don't think it's, 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 a, it's a big difference. You know, they, they both have different games. You know, some of them, the moves and stuff are similar. You know, um, but I feel like they, they all are unique in their own ways, you know, so. I think I, that's all for me. What did you think of the communication on defense today, especially down the stretch? Uh, it was great. Everybody was listening this time. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it was great. Uh, you know, everybody was, you know, the first half, you know, we was up, up and down. But the second half, when we came out of the locker room, I think everybody was just locked in. You know, they we talked about it to start the game, you know, let's just go have fun. And I think that second half, we. Everybody was having fun. You know, whoever subbed in, no matter what it was, you know, everybody was talking, no matter what it was, if it was wrong or right, you know, we, we heard it, you know, we react to it, you know, and we down the stretch, we got stops when we need them, um, and we and we came down on offense and, and made shots, you know, so it, it was great all around game just to finish. Um, that win, that win right there meant a lot to us. Uh, we we was trying to get one by any means. Uh, we let a few uh, a few go by, you know, which we should have won. Um, but just getting this one, you know, feels great just to be in the winner column again. Um, that gives everybody, you know, that that momentum, you know, to go into the next game and the game after that, you know, just try to continue that uh, the winning streak. Um, I think we. We need that, you know, for our mindset, you know, um, and everybody just, you know, play well tonight. Um, but playing alone, K side KP is you no. Know, it's. I think I said this last time. I'm like he makes the. He's gonna make the game a little bit easier, you know, because um, you really can't help off of him. You know, he can shoot the tray ball. Um, he can roll and score in the paint. You know, we can post him. You know, it's a lot of things that uh, KP uh, adds to this team and you know, his game. So um, it's just he, he's just great to be out there. You know, you can play through him the whole time, which we did, you know, down the stretch. And he came up big for us, made big plays. You know, it, we, when he didn't have a shot, passed the ball. Um, so you know, I think it's going to be good. 16 points for you in the fourth quarter. Uh, what led to that takeover? Oh, I don't know. I, I had a slow start again. If 
first half, especially the first quarter. Um, and yeah, it just kind of happened naturally. We were getting a mismatch, and I was trying to make a play out of there. And it just I said, shot over a couple of times from some smaller guys. Um, my teammates kept trusting me, giving me the ball in those situations, and just try to make the right play out of that out of that situation. And, and that was it. It just kind of came naturally. What does that stretch tell you about where you are in terms of your rhythm and, and your health after the time off and the injury? Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm, I think I'm you know building my way back up. Uh, to feeling good, uh, rhythm-wise and, and physically also. I still feel like I'm, you know, a good way away from where I want to be. Um, but, but yeah, tonight I think, uh, especially back to back, late in the game, um, you know, still uh, feeling good enough to to put that together and 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 uh, and, uh, and you know able to, you know, we're able to win the game. You know, so I'm um, feeling good and and you know. Excited to keep building and, and keep getting better. KP, uh, good win. Thank you. Um, I guess the question for you is, you know, you played LeBron in the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference as a Nick, and then as a Laker. Mm -hmm. How charged up do you get playing against the greatest in the game? Currently? Oh yeah, no, it's definitely it's always a. Um, it's always a big stage to play against him. No matter where he goes, you know the, the fans come to see the Lakers and, and, and LeBron, not just LeBron, but also Russ and and all those guys. So it's always a f it's always fun to play against him. Um, and you know he's one of the he one of the greatest to ever do it. Um, tonight again, he had another uh, milestone, uh, which is incredible. You know we um, we have to we have to appreciate him while he's here. You know still playing and putting up those kind of numbers and playing at this level, which is. Absolutely out of this world. So, hat off to him and and um, and what he's been able to do in his career. Follow up to that. Um, New York is home for me. Uh huh. How cool is it to uh, every time you get on the court to play against Carmelo Anthony? And do you guys ever still talk about those days? What if? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's great to play against Melo. You know, he's he uh, he was out for a little bit, and I was back and, and playing really well and playing. Uh, playing his kind of basketball, and and that's you know that's my brother for life. You know he he took me under his wing when I was young and uh, with the Knicks, and I learned a lot of stuff from him. And and even you know as a kid, I had this Instagram post where I said you know I tried to imitate him when I was when I was a kid. I had the cornrows and everything, and so he had a he had a huge impact on on me. And 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 then to be able to play alongside him on the same team was incredible. And yeah, it's good. It's always good to be, compete against him. Are we talking straight backs or zigzags? Uh, I think mostly uh, straight, but I had one or like I had like a little uh, uh, time where I had like all kinds of stuff going on, but more to straight, yeah. I see you play. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> we need pictures. Mm. They're out there for sure. <laughs> you know your your biggest concern this year, but a win like this and your your team getting Definitely, definitely. I think um, we have to also look at this stretch. You know, we still have we still have um, the possibility of, of of making some noise and you know, and hopefully fight for the uh, playing tournament, get in there and then fight for the playoffs, which is the goal. Um, but uh, but also, you know, this this is a good time to just keep building as a team day by day. You know, practice by practice, game by game, and then going to the off season. Recharge the batteries, uh, come back with a fresh mind, and 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 um, and keep building. You know, so that's why we wanna we wanna finish finish this season on a really good note, and see where we end up, and then take that into the next season. You know, you're gonna have to adapt in every situation you're in, but how much of here feels tailored to you and what you kind of like to do, and how has that helped you get into a rhythm? One hundred percent. You know, I feel. I, I think you guys could tell us so I'm much more comfortable. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's it's you know, the coaching staff and, and and my teammates are trusting me. As I said, you know, they're, um, they're they're giving me the ball in those in those situations. You know, started the game off cold, couldn't make a shot, wide open looks, great looks. You know, try to um, just keep playing, uh, have have confidence in every situation, in every shot. And at the end, you know, if you if you if you keep working and, and, and keep your mind in the right place, good things happen. And uh, and that's that's what happened at the end of the game. And and 
it's it's a good I think it's a good building uh, building stone for us. And going back to the cornrows thing, real quick, how old are you and you? So I had a bet with my brothers that we're all gonna grow out our hair, and I was the only one that did the bet, and they just cut their hair. So I had this long hair when I was about 10, 11, maybe 12. Um, and I said, okay, that's what I want to do. I looked at AI, Carmelo. I was like, yeah, that's me. So I did the cornrows. You found the picture? Yes, I did. Got to ask you about your dunk on LeBron. And, um, you know, we've heard from Daniel Gafford that many times you've told him you're, you're trying to get him back and dunk on him. Was, was that when you were waiting for him? Uh, no, I mean, did you have to catch him in practice? You know, right now we're teammates. Uh, he dunked on me pretty bad this season, earlier in the season. Uh, so I told him, I'm like, that was a good one, but I got to get you back. And so we just kind of laughed about it. And um, but yeah, my still my legs are still not where they need to be to to get some really nice ones. But I'm I'm working my way back up, and and, uh, and that that was a you know a small baby step. But to, uh, to dunk on LeBron, has he by chance gotten you in the past? Was that uh, kind of getting him? Um, not clean. He's never got me, like, clean. He, one time I was kind of passing by, and and, and uh, he dunked, and then I was in the picture, like, but I wasn't really, like, contesting it. And uh, uh, he posted that picture. It was like, oh, I got fresh <laughs> legs or whatever. I was like, okay, I see. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, no, he's, he's one of the greatest to play the game, and it's, it's all respect. The um, two-part question. Firstly, you're very tall, and I feel like you've grown into your height, and you're still growing. But at the same time, I feel like you play so many positions. You're a Swiss Army knife, and your coach talked about how much input you've had in the huddle. What, do you consider yourself a dual forward? Do you consider yourself a center? Or do you just consider yourself a basketball player? Ooh, that's a deep question. I mean, um, you know, it's it's with the way the basketball is is kind of changing and being played right now. A lot of switches, a lot of um, a lot of three pointers. Um, you have to you have to adjust, you know. And uh, I was out for 18 months with the ACL. It was a long time. I came back to a team that was playing completely different. I was in the perimeter the whole time, kind of different from the way I was playing in New York. Um, and 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 I, I was you know making adjustments with my game also to be effective in that kind of system. Uh, I think this system is, is is better for my game, and I'm being able to be more effective. Um, but as far as position, and I'm a five, I'm seven three. You know, I um, it's, it's, I think those times where you have two like post up players on the court are, are there's ba barely any posting up anymore. You know, in the league, it's it's Jokic and Embiid. You know, two guys maybe that, that post up a lot, and then you know s situations like this, I do it also and try to take advantage of the mismatch. Um, but yeah, there's not a whole lot of posting up as as, as there was back in the day. So um, I, would, I would I would lean towards saying like, f like a modern day five. You know, well, did that did that answer your question? You did. Thank you. Um, I, I know that you know we should appreciate the greats while we're here. Ron is 36, I can play for a long time, but I think much has been made about who will be the next face of basketball. Um, you, you had a front row seat playing in Dallas alongside Luka. Do you feel as though once LeBron does make that transition, he has a viable op or uh, the actual option of becoming the face after LeBron retires? He definitely has the talent and, and the potential. And he's putting up incredible numbers, playing at an incredible level right now. Um, so you know he he might might as well you know there's there's a few guys that are um, are playing incredible John Morant um, you know Tatum has been playing really well recently Luca is Luca um, and then you know hopefully Zion is back healthy and and you know he's he's an he's an animal he's incredible whenever he's playing so yeah there's a lot of uh, young guys that are are um, are just super talented you know some talent that we haven't seen so uh it's i think it's gonna it's 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 a possibility definitely you know but it, you have to have also luck and health and all those things have to go but you know i wish him well and and hopefully he does that thanks good 
I don't think we've asked you about your relationship with uh, Tomas. He was telling us, you know, when he signed, you know, you guys were always looking forward to, you know, being able to play each other again. You know, he, he was kind of playfully defending you during pregame. I guess, what's that relationship like? How has it grown since you guys have played in, played in Spain? And just how enjoyable is it to be back with him? Uh, yeah, no, he, we... Um, he's one. He's one of those people in my life that I cannot talk to him for two years, for example, and see him, and it's like a day hasn't passed. You know, we have the same relationship. Like we just know each other so well, and 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 I think we're both super. We're both super excited to get the chance to play together here, and and tonight was was a great night for both of us. Uh, we found each other, and you know, he found me more than I I, I found him, but. Um, uh, yeah, he he knows my game and and uh, and he's in, he's in, he's incredible. Whenever he's you know playing his game and uh, and being free out there, he's he's a smart basketball player, making the right plays. And and uh, tonight you could see that quality in him. Danny, what did you feel like um, was the impetus, especially for everybody in the fourth quarter? You got a little bit. Um, you want to fix that? No, I'm sorry. It's just like I, I was like I was out of focus. That's true, and it's very important, especially with our team. Everybody uh, stepped up, and uh, it was great playing today, sharing the ball. Uh, be there for each other, covering on defense. I, I really enjoyed, and and I think that's how we need to play every night. Not because we won, even if we lost, I will tell you, hey, that's how we need to play every night. We, I, th I like, I thought we fought and like uh, made big plays, and everybody knew what he what he needs to do to uh, bring the team to win. And I'm I'm proud of everybody, for sure. Badly. Um, Especially after losing six, six in a row, six in a row, um, we had to do something. We had a, we had a fight, and um, we're still in it. We still believe in. We're still in it. Um, I know sometimes, like for some people, it looks far, but for us, it's not. We're gonna be there every night, whether we lose or we win. We're gonna give our hearts out, and um, that's our mentality. We're trying to finish the season strong. Big time. Uh, great players make great plays, especially in the stretch when uh, when it's needed. And um, it's really great that that he's with us, and it's great that he's making shots, uh, big shots for us. So hopefully he's going to continue doing that. We need him. We need everybody. And um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, keep the streak going. What was it like seeing Ross again? Great. Um, Great seeing Russ, always like great competitor out there, always fun to see him play and, and um, um, just was a big mentor for mentor for me. And, um, you know, he came to me after the game. He was like, hey, you need, I'm going to kill you if you don't play like that every night. <laughs> and I was like, um, I promise I'm going to do my best to, to try and maintain it. But, um, yeah, that's, um, that's big coming from him. Um, Russ's, we, we exchanged, and um, yeah, I'm, I have a, a good place for it in my house. <laughs> just how important was that to have kind of a mentor like that your rookie year, and just how that kind of shaped you going into this year? Just how important was it to have that like that? Um, it's important to have somebody to hold you accountable and like uh, gives you different perspectives, especially like a Hall of Famer like him. And um, just like to see how he gets ready for every game, what's his mentality like. And uh, it's, it's only something you can learn from. And like from every player that I'm playing with, I'm learning something. Whether it's how to play, whether it's like how their mentality going, like everybody's like, talking to me and, and I like listening and, 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 and learning every day, so. Now, we talked a lot about your kind of aggressiveness or your confidence. Um, when you, you mentioned in the post game with Glenn about missing those two shots and then hitting that three at the end there, is that kind of an, 
a recognition of growth on your end uh, of being more aggressive than you probably had? Or Definitely. I got I got a little excited, you know, like the whole arena, like rocking, you know, I wanted to make those big shots and I missed badly and uh, it happens. Uh, but I know like when the game is on the line and I need to be cool or I took a couple of deep, deep breaths and uh, I believe I believe in my shot, you know. Um, I always knew how to shoot. I mean, you know, sometimes it, it's a little bit bad and sometimes a little bit better, but um I'm um, just keep believing in my game, you know. Is that something that you think has grown over time, or is that something? It's definitely grown with my experience too, like how like me maturing, uh, the game slows down. It's it's still in the progress. Like I feel I feel better, but like I, there's still a lot to come for me, and I'm working on it, and I'm learning every day, and 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 this experience is um, very important for me for the future. Well, um, it's always great to see history in the making. You know, I wish I was on the court, like, so, so, like, I can be on the frame, like, when they're gonna <laughs> replay the the stuff. So, like, I'll be like, hey, you know, I've been there, but uh, it wasn't the case. But I've been in the gym, so it's close enough. <laughs> A lot. I mean, that's a that's a great player, and um, his legacy is just unbelievable. Still in, in his age, and I feel like um, all like him taking care of his body and, and and be professional every single se every season every minute he's on the floor is something you look up to.